This morning on DC News Now, armed officers, the local university considering the use of lethal force to protect students and staff. Plus cloudy and cooler today, but get ready for a real taste of fall just in time for your weekend. Also ahead, brazen burglary, a Montgomery County smash and grab in the middle of the night, and it's all caught on video. Plus, we're stretching your dollar, what you can do right now to save on energy bills. And lottery fever sleeps the nation. Wow, it would be awesome. The Powerball jackpot soars after another drawing with no matching numbers. It's Thursday, October 5th, 2023. The station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. All right, it's 7 o'clock straight up, and we're starting with a live look over the National Cathedral. Looking beautiful, a nice, pretty crisp start to the morning. We're loving it this morning. Thanks for joining us on DC News Now. I'm Joseph Aquila, in for tonight. You're right. Yeah, good morning to you. I'm Corey James, and Shanique is tracking your morning commute. We'll have more on those roads in just a moment. Uh, turning things over to Jackie, who's tracking the forecast. Things yeah. are looking pretty good. Yeah, not too bad out there today. We're going to be seeing partly sun filled skies out there for the afternoon, but out there this morning, the impact is the fact that we're seeing reduced visibility, very low low visibility for parts of the region down about a mile or less seeing that in Culpeper half a mile in Orange at the hour, about a mile in Frederick Winchester about a mile also Cumberland and Kaiser so in those areas I just listed those are the regions that you want to make sure that you're taking it slow leave a little bit of extra time before you head out this morning just so you can get to your destination on the safe side satellite and radar showing us aside from the fog we're just seeing mainly clear conditions more clouds are back out towards our west out ahead of that cold front that cold front will be the reason why we do see those temperatures take a time as we get towards the weekend and let's talk about temperatures though currently those are cool and crisp especially back out towards our western zones we're seeing a few of those mid upper 40s for much of the i81 corridor aside from hagerstown mid 50s or low 60s in the district at this hour one of the warmer spots if heading out for that morning coffee run temperatures eventually warm back up into the upper 60s by about 10 a.m under some partly sun filled skies more details with the rest of that seven day forecast coming up but shanika is here with the all important look at those roadways if people are heading out for coffee right now how long is it going to take them to get it all right so if you're heading out for coffee right Right now, let me tell you, Jackie, taking the Capitol Beltway might not be the best option if you want your coffee right away. So here's the inner loop stretch out of uh, Greenbelt, and you're seeing crash activity that is taking the right side. So it is taking uh, two right lanes there. You're seeing those flashing lights. We have uh, crews on scene there. So do just stay to the left to get by, and you can see how packed you are. A lot of people are just uh, slowly getting by. So that's the inner loop. Let's check out the outer loop. Now, this is out of Montgomery County. We were dealing with a crash, and this was right near 29. It looks like things are looking a lot better, but you're still slow. All right, Shanika, thank you. Time right now is 702. Police are searching for the person who hit a teenage boy with the truck and left the scene. Officials say a Penske moving truck hit the 15 year old in Alexandria. It happened at the corner of Montgomery and North Patrick Street around 3 o'clock yesterday. The boy is currently in the hospital. Authorities say after hitting the boy, the truck driver drove toward a middle school, almost hitting children there. If you have any information on a possible suspect, you are asked to call Alexandria Police. In 702 developing this morning in that shooting on Morgan State University campus, Baltimore police say at least two people opened fire when a fight between two groups escalated. The Tuesday night shooting injured five people. Now take a look at this video from that night. It was taken by Morgan State freshman Evan Grant showing the scary moment police at gunpoint entered his dorm as they swept the campus following that shooting. Police say the shooters were targeting just one person who was not injured. No arrests have been made in that shooting and local DC universities are now taking more action to protect their students after five people were injured at Morgan State University. DC News Now's Liberty Zabala is live this morning at American University with the latest on the new security measures in place. Liberty, good morning. Well, American University is enhancing its security measures by doing things like adding more cameras and more radios and even considering arming campus police with lethal force. And this comes a day after a mass shooting at Morgan State University in Baltimore left five people injured. Now American University Vice President Bronte Burley Jones released a, a letter to students about increasing security to keep them safe. She says currently AUPD officers 
officers are equipped with less than lethal chemical and impact weapons and trained in de-escalation tactics. She says the options under considerations will include the current approach of unarmed campus police. Another option would be to issue firearms to officers and supervisors. An alternative option would be to stage firearms in vehicles or introduce less than lethal options that could be used against armed intruders. Back in April, students protested at George Washington University after its decision to arm campus police. Meanwhile, some students at Howard University say increased security on campus would make them feel safer. And I know with our homecoming coming up and it's very big mm -hmm. and with security like the last years, mm -hmm. there has never really been any sort of security. Like if there is, there's a few, mm -hmm. but yard fest, a lot of people could just walk on. Mm -hmm. just walk there's no security you can get on and there's people are being trampled sometimes like it's crazy. And right now, American University has not made an official decision on whether to arm campus police just yet. They say first this fall, they will gather and collect community input and then release those findings in spring of next year. For now, at American University, Liberty Zavala, D.C. News Now. All right, Liberty, thank you. And right now, Kaiser Permanente employees are on strike. Dozens walked out of clinics across the DMV yesterday. The demonstrations, they're frustrating patients who say they're already dealing with extremely slow service because of poor staffing. One woman says she's been trying to schedule a surgery for severe pelvic pain over a year. She says Kaiser has been refusing to give her a procedure date because of a lack of staffing. She tells us Kaiser's also not referring her to an out-of-network doctor, even though the pain impacts her ability to work. It's just really, really hard because I am the breadwinner for my family. I have to be able to work. We hear the frustration. We have the we hear the call to help. A total of 180 healthcare workers are part of the strike in the DMV. Workers say they want a fair contract that addresses what they call unsafe staffing levels and increases wages. Kaiser says negotiators are also making progress in reaching a deal. Time right now is 7.06. We're about a month away from Election Day in Virginia. That's right, and state officials are working to fix a major error that mistakenly removed voters from the registry. Alex Suarez is live in Arlington this morning. So, Alex, how do we, do we know how many people were impacted by this issue? Unfortunately, we aren't sure exactly how many people were taken off of the registry. Governor Yunkin's office says that there is an unknown amount who were mistakenly taken off and uh, now they're trying to work to figure that out. Now, the folks who were taken off, we do know were people who were on probation. So what happened was they do have a system where they classify um, when people violate their probation and these probation violations were misclassified in the system as felonies that automatically kicked them off of the voter registry. Every month the Department of Election does get a file from Virginia State Police and that has a report of felony convictions. Now state election officials are having to work with VSP to figure out whose registration may have been canceled in error and have those people reinstated immediately. The registration deadline for the next election is October 16th. That's about 10 days from now. However, voters can register after that date and then vote with a provisional ballot on Election Day. Now, if you're hearing this story and you're thinking, I need to check my registration, or if it just rings a bell that you need to change something in your voter registration, you can do that online. The website to do that is uh, elections.virginia.gov slash registration. Once you're on that website, if you look at the tab that says view your info, you can change anything and also check your registration right there on the site. Live in Virginia, I'm Lex Suarez, CC News Now. All right, Lex, thank you. Time right now is 7.08. In about an hour and a half this morning, renters in Loudoun County will have a chance to join the rental census pro wait list. Rather. That's right. It is the first time that list has been open in a decade. Now, people already lined up outside the Department of Housing and Community Development. There are only 300 spots available on that wait list. We spoke with people in line who say they're making sure their names make it on that list. Many of them say the money would help them and their families. Para mí es una gran lucha y una gran ayuda que nos van a dar. Y gracias a esto voy a poder vivir mejor con mi familia. Something that I needed, I know my neighbors needed, 
and that's why to get better life, you know, living in a better place, that's what we want to do. So here's some information to note. The vouchers are funded by the federal government. It's designed for people with the lowest incomes, disabilities, or people over the age of 62. Anyone who makes it off the list will get part of their monthly rent paid for, which is based on income. Now, if you're a single person household, your income needs to be less than roughly $53,000. For a family of four, the household income needs to be less than $75,000. Once again, that list opens at 8.30 a.m., so in about an hour and a half. Now, according to a new survey, many Americans say rising energy costs or extreme weather has hurt their wallets this year. Yeah, DC News Now's consumer reporter Ben Dennis is stretching your dollar this morning with how you can prepare before you turn on your heat this winter. Hey there, 81 percent of Americans said that their wallets were impacted by energy costs or by extreme weather. Only two in 10 people did not, according to a new bank rate survey. We're looking out for all households, including low income families who could get hundreds to close to $2,000 in utility assistance. 47% of people in the American Northeast, including the DMV, said higher electric bills strained their finances this summer. That's nearly half of all homes, according to Bankrate survey. The average household's bill in August, for example, hovered around $150 based on energy use estimates by EnergyBot and federal pricing data. So how can the most fiscally strained families apply for money to help? More in a moment. First, how everybody can save in the cooler months. Dominion Energy, Virginia's utility provider, says get a free energy efficiency kit to audit your usage. Smart thermostats will help control temperature. Amazon has one for $56, much cheaper than many others listed on that site. Products with the federal Energy Star label have a seal of approval for savings. And be cognizant of how much electricity you use and cut back when you're not at home. And if you're looking for financial help, visit online Lie Heap Tool, the low income home energy assistance program. Select your state, county, and instantly you're shown an office location plus contact information to field your questions. You can also visit benefits.gov. Select the type of help that you're looking for and select where you live or take their questionnaire to find what benefits you may be eligible for. And more on home energy assistance, visit acf.hhs.gov. Grant recipient resources, other home financial assistance information is laid out there online. Ben Dennis, back to you.